Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here today with Rich Leto, uh, originally from Philadelphia, and now from Indeed Columbus. Indeed I am. Born <laughs> so, and raised. Welcome, Rich. Thanks for being here. Same here, Bob. Um, so uh, I want to ask you, I always ask people this, the first question I usually ask them is, you know, why and how and when did you get started? So it's definitely 40 years ago, meaning in my 20s, and started to ask my parents, you know, where did my grandparents come from? They gave me some information. I scratched it down on a piece of paper and I put the paper on the top of my bureau and never did much with it, let's say. And then one day, still 40 years ago, I said, let me see what I can dig up, you know, my roots, right? At that time, nothing was digitized. It was actually going to city records office. Uh, I actually had to mail something to the National Archives where I had to fill out an application, give them some names, give them some dates, and then I would get some copies back, pay for that. Like I said, this is 40 years ago. I went to the free library, looked up some old newspapers via microfiche to get some obituaries to sort of uh, connect the dots a little bit better to make sure I had the right dates to see if the obituaries had any more relevant information. And basically I compiled a nice little folder of information, let's say, right? So I put that folder in a closet and I never opened it until recently, maybe a couple of years ago. So 40 years ago I started, but I never completed. Uh, yeah, that must've been some, some hard work 40 years ago doing all of that. It was. Um, so, so the, the photo behind you, which family is that? Is that mom's family or dad's family? So that's my dad's family, you know, on the paternal side. Uh, I'm a third generation. So this picture showing the first generation, the foreign born, my grandfather's the one standing and he's got, he's got his hand on my dad's uh, shoulder. So that's my father there, Lewis. And then my grandmother's sitting and she's holding the youngest. So it was, my grandfather was Francesco and then my grandmother was Katarina. So they're the first generation and all those siblings there are my aunts and uncles who are the second generation. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's an awesome photo. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there, five. There's a little guy, there's a little guy. <laughs> seven, if you wanted to know, four, uh, five, five girls and two boys. Oh, that's great. My mom had, there was originally 11. Two died very, very young. Wow. Uh, one one was born in Italy. My grandmother was pregnant with another one on the boat. Uh, and then there were seven born here. It's amazing. Amazing. Uh, their history, I know my grandfather came over first, but he was married in Italy to my grandmother. So he makes the trip. And then my grandmother comes with my aunt. That's the tallest girl mm -hmm. there as a baby. So they made the trip and they settled in Philadelphia. Um, they're from Calabria, a, a very, very small town village as they all are, uh, Santa Catarina de Ono on the Ionian Sea. Uh, and what, so what year did they come? Uh, we can trace 1902, 1910, some of the documents prove that. Oh, so pretty and early. Great, oh yeah, mass, they're definitely in that mass migration. Um, my grandfather became a naturalized citizen. I did was able to get his uh, paper of declaration and then the naturalization form itself. Oh, nice, nice. And and um, what did he do when he- when, So his... he was a typical laborer, didn't have much of a skill. I, what I was told is he worked either in the subways or in the, the, the water and sewage systems in the city, so to speak. Yeah, well, you know, those, those guys, were, they were hard workers. They weren't afraid to work. That's yeah, they sure. built they built our country right they were the absolutely backbone. absolutely yeah. um and um did, now did did um do you know if your grandmother worked at all i know some of the women were seamstresses and things like that i could tell you that she was a how i'm going to be honest with you she was definitely oh, i don't want to say illiterate but i might say meaning she never learned to write or uh speak the english language that's pretty much a definite yeah she yeah. cared for the children. That was yeah. My, my mom's my mom's mom was like that too, and she never learned to read or write. Although you know she yeah. did. She's I guess because because of the kids. I mean she did. 
she did learn enough English. So now how far back have you been able to get uh, the family? Okay, so, well here, so let me fast forward, meaning here's this folder I had 40 years ago. So recently I pulled it out like a couple of years ago. I said, how could I further this research? But I knew I had Ancestry and I had Facebook. So I went to Facebook route. So what I did is I found the Facebook group of the town, Santa Catarina del Orno. I posted some information. I posted some photos. And then I asked if anybody knew my relatives. And I got a mountain of um, e uh, comments back, all in Italian. So I had to use Google Translate, <laughs> even though Facebook did that. And I got all these, these comments. Some were actually in Italy, but the big majority of them were in Australia. What I, what I found out is that after World War II, many immigrants made it to Australia as opposed to the States. So the person in Australia that I really contacted, he had a family tree already on Ancestry. So he's able to, so I didn't go that far back. He went pretty far back, probably 1600s. And I gave him information to fill in on my side, you know, probably 1850 and forward. Um, so Facebook really broke the ground. And then to tie in with the people from Australia that were like third and fourth cousins removed um, was really fascinating to me. Uh, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's how I found um my dad's mom's family was on Facebook because her name is not a common name. So, you know, when I put it out there, uh, it was it was pretty easy. And and my cousin, my fourth cousin, Cinzia, she started a Facebook group, uh, Piramalo, and she thought she was going to find people from South America and Spain because the family is originally from Spain. She had no idea that there was anybody in America. It was just you know, fascinating. And I had nobody, I didn't know anybody was there. So it was a, right. it was a great find. So that's pretty good. Get back to the 1600s. Anybody interest, any interesting stories from, from back then or any? Um, not really. Well, <laughs> what, what I came to find out, there were different branches of the Lettos, meaning there were other people named Leto, but they weren't actually part of my family which I couldn't ascertain what that meant in some respect. But um, now I've been told that the village is really been, it, it was a fire decimated in 1980. It's kind of in ruins. Uh, there might be still the church there. Uh, everybody moved off the hilltop into the marina towards the, towards the ocean. And uh, the only way to get to that hilltop is this road um, they sent me some pictures still. They tried, I tried to ask for where my family's front door was because that was a big thing, the portico, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to get a little bit of that. Um, but people have told me, you know, you got to visit there because here's the bottom line. I've never visited that town. That's the next step in this journey. Is yeah, the, I, 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 I'm, I'm dying to go back. Uh, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to be there now. See, <laughs> it's that simple, Bob. I'm... And, have, you, uh, have you been to Italy at all? So, no, I'm embarrassed to say no. I'm, well, don't be I embarrassed. Do I, I only been once, so don't, you know, you shouldn't be embarrassed. Okay. But it's, when, I, when we went, I, you know, we, we were in Rome. You know, you always, everybody has to go to Rome. Uh, and then we went to Naples briefly just to pick up a car to drive to Sorrento because we, my son was a baby and we were just going to spend a week relaxing in Sorrento. And a little sightseeing. I had no idea at the time, 25 years ago, that, that my uh, both my father's um, parents lived about a half a mile from the train station. Wow. I only found that out recently. I mean, I could have you know could have walked there. Um, right. And uh, you know, let, this past Saturday, we was, I was supposed to be you know these third and fourth cousins and everything. But I'm going next May. I don't care what disease is. <laughs> I'm going. Good. I'm with you too. <laughs> yes. I'm tired of this crap. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so now how about how about your mom's family? So I can tell you it's the same same scenario, 1902, 1910, early immigration. 
Uh, my grandfather comes over. He's from the region of Puglia, a little town called B Bicari. Uh, he comes over and he works at a Stetson hat company in Philadelphia. Um, sometime in 1910, my grandmother comes over and they get married in Philadelphia. And I do have those records at the local Italian National Parish Church. And uh, then he opens up his own business, an entrepreneur. He opens up a hat store, uh, which were pretty was pretty cool back then because everybody had a fedora or a hat. And I've got some pictures of that. He became a naturalized citizen. Uh, what I can tell you is, though, that he dies in 1930, only to have my grandmother raise also seven children up until her death in 1960. So kind of a sad story there. Uh, but my cousin has connected and he goes to that town in Italy all the time. He found a local historian and he's really connected with some cousins. And I hope to one day get to that side of the family in Puglia. Right, that's Eric, right? Correct, yes. Yeah, and he has the photo of the, he has the photo of the, the hat. Uh, exactly. As we, as we all do. Yes. That's something we cherish most definitely, Bob, as you know, with your own family. Absolutely. Yeah. I have the photo of my, uh, my, unfortunately my grandfather's not in it. His brother's in it and my uncle's in it, but we have the, they had a, they had an embroidery shop in New York city. Uh, that's and, neat. Uh, I don't know if I, I told you, I've said it on a couple of the podcasts, but when I met, uh, my cousin, Linda, who our families are very closely tied and we never knew each other. Uh, she actually, her mother saved beads from my grandfather's shop. And she brought, wow. she brought us beads. Um, so, you know, at the, at the earliest, these things go back to probably the twenties or thirties, the latest, probably the fifties, but to just to hold them in your hand, knowing that they're heirlooms, your grandfather's, they're you artifacts, know? they could be in a museum. Uh, but they hold so much value to us personally. But uh, we have a we have a family artifact. We have a handwritten note, obviously probably in my grandmother's handwriting, all in Italian. It lists the children. It lists when they got married, when they came over, and it's this personal memento. It's like I said, we cherish it. It should be in a museum, just as you're explaining too. Well, that's really special though to have the the family history written down. You know. I, you know, Italians, for, I know, you know, Americans, they kept, a, a, you know, especially the Protestants, they kept a lot of stuff in the family Bible, you know, they would mm. write everything. For some reason, Italians didn't do that. I don't know no. why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, I mean, to have something like that in your own handwriting. And I have, um, I have a couple of things signed um, by my my grandmother, one thing that written in their own, but you know, to have it written in their own hand is really something. And, and I just, I, it just popped up, the two things that just popped up on Ancestry just recently, my father's father's naturalization record. I had the little card, but I didn't have the full, I didn't have the full record. Exactly, it had the I serial number. Record. Yes, that's yeah. what started my journey, correct. I don't know if you can see it. But, yes. Uh, so I had that, and then, I never knew that my grandmother applied. I had no idea. She applied after him and her signature is on it, which anytime you see a signature, I have my um, third great grandfather's signature on a record in oh, Italy. Wow. Wow. And, and, and uh, his son and my grandfather So you know, when you have, see these signatures, I'm getting goosebumps now talking. Exactly. About <laughs> no, I, like I said, artifacts, you know, you think museum, but they're, they're, they're cherished to us. Then they could be in a museum because they tell such a story like we're doing here, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's, it's amazing. We're fortunate. <laughs> and so, so now I know Eric's been back to the town a lot. Now, have you been in contact with, with the cousins that he's, that he knows over there? Wow. It's funny. You should mention that. So, I don't know where to go with this. So he's over there about a month ago and he sends me a text. He says, are you available to talk? I said, sure. And I knew he was in Italy. So he picks up the phone. He calls me on my cell and he says, hey, I'm talking to one of our relatives that would like to hear you. Now, Eric's a fourth generation. I'm the third. But 
this woman was speaking in Italian. I, he had to translate everything. My understanding is that this woman was somehow related to my grandmother. And my grandmother had sent her all these family photos that this lady had for 70 years. And I recognized every, every photo that they were talking about. I said, sure. And we had no idea. They were postcards with some Italian writing in the back that he, he, he photoed and then eventually sent. But they were from my grandmother sending it to her relatives overseas. Wow. That's unbelievable. I mean... And they saved I, them. I'm still, I, I mean, you can see my mouth. My, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, my grandmother's handwriting, and they're like my uncles, my and she, and they're like confirmation. They're holy community, telling her about her her children. You know, making these sacraments. I was blown away. Let's I'll put it to you lightly, and uh, I hope to get to meet that person someday. Yeah. So he's he's connected. Um, I'm very thankful for that. That's amazing. That they, amazing that they saved it. I mean, I've heard, I've heard, um, you know, some other stories where they, you know, have one or two things in in Italy or a picture or something like that. But to actually have the stuff that your grandmother sent back to them. I'm like I said, I'm in awe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting the goosebumps now. <laughs> yes, yes. And I can imagine how he felt being in our presence, seeing those things, because he knew once she pulled out this box. Wow. So, so Eric took the, the pictures of these, yeah? He took pictures of the picture, yes. And I'll he... Have, uh, I'll have he to bother Facebook, him for that. He made a Facebook group that I'll have to share with you, and you can see them, yes. Oh, okay, because I'd like to put some of them on here since we're talking about it. So so let's... All right, so now, so we got the background and everything like that. Um, what was it like growing up in, you know, the second city to New York City, Italian-wise, Philadelphia? I like I like that because I'll I'll take it a step further. You know, we were always in the shadows, right, of New York, which was okay. We were considered the underdog, even on sports wise. But yeah, the second largest influx of Italian immigrants. I mean, we're right there. We're right there. Uh, it was typical. You pick up any book about the Italian American experience. We lived it. Those people standing behind you, myself, my sisters, my cousins. We lived it festivals, the sacraments with your family all around, obviously the Sunday. I, I, what I like to share is that story. My father would always take me to my, every Sunday, religiously, my father would take me to my grandmother's house. She'd be sitting in her chair, you know, her eyes wide up, but she'd always have a dollar in her hand and she would grab my hand and give me that dollar. <laughs> and then um, you had to sit there with her for a while you know, and then dinner would come and it'd be the Sunday. But it was it was typical. Like I said, you read any book about I put on quotes, the Italian American experience. Like I said, I I we wrote the book. <laughs> we wrote the book, just as I'm sure you can say also. Uh, well, yeah. And, you know, I I you know, my family was in, you know, I, I said this to somebody the other day, the New York. Uh, he's from he's from Boston, the north end of Boston. And I said, that, you know, Boston's North End is kind of what I see the typical, if you're going to compare it to a little Italy, it's the one in Manhattan, you know, Spring Street and downtown and all of that. That's the way the North End is. But New York was unique in that every borough had its own Italian community. And some of them had two or three, you know, Brooklyn, the Bronx, the Queens, you know, Staten Island right. later, uh, which is where all the mafiosa guys went up on the hill there. Um, right. But that's 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 i think new york is unique in that way because there were so many of these neighborhoods and mine and corona was small um and if you if you know the king of queens um oh yeah the, the lemon ice king of corona you know that no shot boy. at the end right nice uh, my grandmother lives mm, four blocks from there something like that. oh so you know, awesome we would go to the lemon ice king Awesome. Don't mix the flavors. You could only have one flavor. You couldn't have, <laughs> right? you couldn't have lemon and grape. If you asked yeah, for lemon, yeah. it was like the soup Nazi. Get, get out of here. Can't do that. Now we called it water ice. That's yes. what we called it in yeah. Philadelphia. Water yeah, ice. we called it lemon ice, no matter what the flavor was. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was lemon ice. Um, but, you know, it's 50s and 60s, everybody on the block was Italian. I think there was maybe one non-Italian. And, and we had one, we Same. had one feast. 
right outside my grandmother's gate in the summertime. Wow. Awesome. Which was, which was, which was a lot of fun. Uh, but you know, my, my mom's mom was like that. She had 23 grandchildren and her life just revolved around the grandchildren. That's it. That's all she cared about. Familia again. Yeah. The more, the, <laughs> the more, the better, the longer they stayed, the better. That's that, you know, she, she, I think when she died, she had 23 grandchildren and something like, I don't know, 32 no, or 35 great grandchildren. That's wonderful. Um, wonderful. But to get back to the same with, you know, we had the butcher shop, we had the pastry shop that were run by Italians. So, you know, my mother would say, go get me some sausage today, you know, get the kind with the fennel or get the sweet sausage. Fennel's the only one. Stuff. I love the fennel one. That's my favorite. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it was the same type of community. And then, you know how it was, my aunt lived like two blocks away. And then, you know, every now and then my aunt would, can you come over and fix that light bulb for me? Your uncle can't do that, you know, and I would go help her, you know, a little, and then she would slip me $5 or something. So... <laughs> Did you have the kids table growing up? Uh, well, I mean, you're going back when we were kids. We're kids yeah. yeah, exactly. Sure. And you sat with your cousins, all the cousins. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then the adults would sit in the kitchen or something and you, your table might be off to another room. Exactly. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, there was yeah. always the, you, you always, you always wanted to get, be old enough to get to the, to the next level up. We had, in my grandmother's backyard, we would have three levels. In the yard, there would be a, uh, there was like a covered uh, gazebo type of thing, right? With a table and that's where the aunts and uncles sat. And, you know, maybe you could squeeze in there every once in a while, you know? Uh, and then there was another set of table, another table where the older cousins would sit. And we were relegated because I was in, towards the younger of the cousins. Uh, we were relegated to the, to the, to the steps uh, or the the little ledge by the grapevine, <laughs> that kind of stuff, you know. Um, sure, sure. But, but and and being you know as the youngest, we always had to go to the store. We had same to go, here. Yeah. Same. Here. And the proprietor knew who you were. Oh, you're you're Elsie's son. You know, it's look who it is. It's Richard. You know, Elsie's son. What does she want? You know, they they knew it wasn't for me. What does your mother want? You know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you'd have the list or something. Yeah. My uncle in, in, in my town, two of my uncles, my mom's brothers moved to uh, my town, College Point, uh, after a few years. And um, my uncle Tom, there was a little grocery store right outside his yard. He walked out the yard, there was a little grocery store there. <laughs> and he would write, write a note, please give Bob a, a, a quart of beer, I'll pay you, you know, later. And he, you, you, go. you go with the note, he'd actually give you the quart of beer in the bag and you walk next door. <laughs> no more. I can't worry with that anymore. Credit that. That was credit, right? It, yeah, credit, sure. And you had to yeah. pay your bill. Yep, absolutely. Yep. But my my when my uncle moved to where we were, he used to go. My father used my father worked worked on Sundays because he worked for the Daily News, and that was his day to work. And when my uncle moved, I I guess I was about eight, nine, or ten, or something like that. And um, I would, his house was a few blocks away, and I would walk there, and then we go to my grandmother's house. Um, and there was a probably, uh, it's probably almost two miles long, this one road, this one straight long road. And uh, he would say to me, you want to drive? And I'd say, sure. And I'd sit on his lap with a big steering wheel, steering wheel. <laughs> and drive that one straight road, you know, from College Point until we got to the, to the L line. And then, you know, then he would take over again. But uh you know those kinds of things you know th th that's what people did back then you know yeah yeah they took care of us you know i'm so thankful for my aunts and uncles i mean they, it's, they look i always say us. i always say i had i had nine moms and dads right because yep. they would do anything for you they would take care of you if you went to the house you were like you, you were like that their, their kid you know and You'd be disciplined like that kid too. Oh, right. right. And I don't know, but you could say the same. They never missed a birthday. There was always a birthday card with a five dollar in it or something, and and it's like wow. Yeah, maybe people a hundred years ago said the same thing. I don't know, but you didn't disrespect these people. You didn't. You no. Weren't there. Disrespect. No. 
an anther uncle? No, nah, we were fortunate, taught right, you know, and um, we're, we're, we're fortunate. We're very lucky. Yeah. I know. And it's to come from it's, humble beginnings. And, you know, like I said, we owe so much to those. I, I, I mean, to go back a little bit with the whole journey, and you know, you know, it's like they left out of Naples. What I always found is, okay, they got on the ship at Naples, but how did they get from the village to Naples? And I hear a donkey, I hear a wagon, then they had a wait in Naples. I mean, we complain when we wait at an airport because the plane's late. I mean, I, I don't know how they made the trek. I, I just, I don't know. I know, and then the boat ride was no fun either. I, I, I interviewed somebody, she came in 1954. And the boat ride was horrible. You know, she told oh. me about it, how, how bad it was. Uh, so you could imagine what it was like in 1900. And, and then, you know, the whole Ellis Island with the customs officials, what they went through. It, it, like I said, you can't fathom it, but, you know, that's why we just honor and we're, we're so thankful for the, what they've done for, for us and then for our country. In a yeah. Long, you know, yeah. The, and the sacrifices, you know, like, like, like to your point, you know, you think back, you try, you know, you call somebody now and you don't answer and you're like wondering where they are. And, you know, these, you know, it took maybe three weeks to get a letter over there. There was no phone calling or, you know, yeah. Zoom or anything like that. I, I, I just can't fathom, but, you know, like you said, they, the sacrifice we could never even think about, you know, comprehend. And that's why, you know, that's one of the reasons why I do this is because... I'm hoping it doesn't get lost. I'm hoping that some of these stories get out there and, and the, you know, the younger Italian Americans get to understand some of this stuff. And, you know, they don't, you know, they may hear an Italian sp speak in a movie or they may go to Italy and hear the, but we lived with the language. You know, we grew up hearing that accent. And you're sharing that. That's the good part. Not, you're telling our story. You're sharing it. I applaud you for that. And it, it it's, um, uh... It's important to be, be, be told and, um, you know. Yeah, and, and, that, and, and that's why working with, I'll do a little plug on the thing I'm doing with Anthony Riccio with, with the, the voices from the past. You listen to these tapes, these people who were, who were born in, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s, talking in 1976 or 78 about their trip and their, their thing. And, you know, you know, it's just one woman was talking about, she had 14 brothers and sisters in Sicily, 14. And she said the girls, the girls used to have to switch shoes. There was one pair of shoes for every two girls. So when they went to mass, one girl would go to the mass and then come home and give the shoes to the other girl so she could go to mass. Once again, that story's captured, thankfully, now in audio, but for us that comprehend what transpired there is is unfathomable yeah you know? and you know but then they you know they they do tell good stories about the simple life and going out and picking the grapes or you know getting the eggs from the chickens and they had a rough life over there but it was no picnic when they got to america either no it was it was struggles they were discriminated against you know all of that uh didn't assimilate assimilate well, but but then they they were smart. They came up with their own benevolent societies, mutual aid societies. You know, sons of Italy, the sons and daughters. So, you know, somebody was smart. Hey, you know, there's a. Um, they came bigger... up with Frank. They came up with Frank Sinatra. <laughs> ah, enough said. <laughs> enough said. And, and you know, you know, we can go down the list of names. Like you said, you picked Frank. You know, Verdi. Guillermo Marconi, you know, it goes on and on. Joe DiMaggio and those guys, you know, they were household names in America. You know, I remember my, my dad telling me they used to go see a, a movie and Frank Sinatra would sing, be singing for like 35 cents or something like that. You know, back in, I guess, before he was famous, mm -hmm. I guess back in the early 40s or something like that been so much contribution by them and and you know i did a little piece on the um, italian medal of honor winners uh and you know people don't realize that these these guys were really you know brave men and, and john i forget the last name Bas 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 yeah, i mean he exactly. was exactly sure that's he great was history, isn't it? he was the consummate one there um, you go but yep. you know there was 
There was, and I don't know if you know this, there, there were seven Italians with Custer at Custer's last stand. And the only survivor was Giovanni Martini, the bugler, who wow. the reason he survived is that they, they sent him with a message to, to the other guys to say, hey, there's a crap load of Indians out here. And that's the only reason that he survived because he was sent back with the message. Yeah, I love great stories of those, like you said, that were the trailblazers, let's say. Um, and it was across the spectrum. You know, you pick Frank Sinatra, Philadelphia had Mario Lanza. He was, mm -hmm. you know, the second Caruso. I mean, you know, uh, all around, whether it was in sports, you know, Angelo and Dundee, what he did for boxing and, you know, the music side and theater and just everywhere, you know, we, we made our mark and that's, that's good that we talk about it still. And yeah, keep yeah. At the forefront. You know? And certainly, and certainly don't, and don't, don't forget the sacrifices the people made to get us here. Playing pl nicely said. Yes, definitely. Bob. Um, well, this has been a lot of fun, Rich. I really appreciate you taking the time. And, sure. um, you know, we'll, we'll keep in touch and, and maybe we'll have to do a, a three way with me, you and Eric. That'd be nice. I would love that. That would be yep. real nice. Well, I applaud what you're doing. Like I said, genealogy today is kind of easy, but you know, um, sometimes there's a tree already built in ancestry, but you still got to dig. I, was, I found a, I found a library of Congress site that has digitized newspapers and some are in the Italian and, um, found some of my family references in there, um, way back, you know, so there's so much more to uncover, let's say, but I, I feel, I feel good where my roots are. I found them and, um, I'm glad that, um, uh, you know, I can share that with you and then everybody else or, and what you're doing too, for everybody else that, that has a story to tell. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the point. And, you know, anybody listening, I'm always looking for more stories. Perfect. So, all right. Well, thanks again, Rich. Hey, goodbye, Bob. Thanks. Talk to you later.